dreams coming true While I'm staring at the world through my rear view so, I'm seeing nothing but my dreams coming true While I'm staring at the world through my rear view They got me staring at the world through my rear view Go and let me scream to God He can't hear you I can feel your heart beating fast Cause it's time to die Getting high while the time fly Hi there We are Rear View TV channel where we talk about all sorts of things that we feel you should most definitely know in today's era. This information will leave you questioning whether what you was taught in school is a fact or fiction or just a lie overall. However, this is just for information purposes and we would suggest you to do your own research. Please join our community. Like, share, and comment if you wish, but most of all subscribe to stay updated. Here's something that you would want to know. Something that's been hidden under the carpet for years. A story that no one we hear of actually talks about in our everyday life but stories like these is why our channel's here to bring them to you. All of us have grown up to trust and believe what we have been educated within the western academic system for many years. However, on our channel we find the missing parts of our history that matters, history that is not being taught in the western classrooms. We start this video off with talking about the original inhabitants of Europe who were black people. The black Scots, the black Irish and the black Brits who were forcibly removed from their British Isles and has also been removed from our history. In this video we will be using some text from the book The Negro Question Part 4, The Missing Link by Lee Cummings. The author has inserted the quotes of a few white historians to show you that these historians, who were closer to the epoch center did not have a problem telling the truth about the original inhabitants of Europe. The black Welshmen, British men, Irishmen, Frenchmen, Russians, Germans, Italians and Swedes were in Europe thousands of years before the English, white men, arrived around 449 AD. This will be proven by the writings of one professor called Boyd Dawkins, professor of geology at Manchester University, London. Professor Boyd Dawkins was invited to speak in the public hall in Manchester, London, January 18, 1979. Professor Boyd Dawkins, in his writings wrote the original people of Britain, France, Spain and England were short black men of about 5 feet 6 inches in height. The black people were already in England when the English, white, fathers invaded Europe in 449 AD. The English, white, Fathers were of a warlike people who by 607 AD had pushed the Basquest into Wales, Cumberland, Westmoreland, the Highlands of Scotland and Devon. The black people often spoke of being citizens of the Roman Empire. The Welsh or ancient Britons, who were black peoples, were in possession before today's known Romans ever came to Europe. This is a picture of Frederick the Great but let's remember who the Roman were. All the German kings were Roman emperors. This is George II and he was a Roman and German king who was sitting on the throne of England in the 1700s. They were the ones who overthrew the House of Stuart or the family of Stuart. Before I get into the dynamics of what happened we have to prove that both black and whites acknowledge that the Jacobites or the Scots, Irish and Brits or Europeans in a whole were black and that the people who inhabited Europe first were black. Professor Winchell Alexander, 1815 1990 collection of journals quotes, these black men came from Atlantis, northern Africa and they overran Europe. They were known as Britons. The Roman historian Tacitus, the origins of the black Britons quotes, the Iberians are black people with curly hair. Anthropological Review Society, London Vol. 8. Jos Fritzen, Annals of Caledonian Picts and Scots, Vol. 2 quotes. The Picts also called Brits are brown complexioned with curly hair. Ivan Sertima, in the African presence in early Europe quotes, the Britons look like the Ethiopians. Albert Churchward 1912, in The Origins and Devolution PGS 12, 13 quotes, the Black Basque were exterminated from Europe. Professor Boyd Dawkins quotes, the ancient Britons, Irish and Scots are of a short black people. Dr. Thurnam in Nature Journal of Science quotes, from the evidence at hand, it seems that the Iberian, black man, occupied the whole of Western Europe at one time. Lastly, Professor Huxley 1870, in The Iberian Race, page 332 quotes, the Iberian, blacks, 
Basque bones have been found all over Europe with his animals. All these white historians had no problem writing the truth in the 1800s but all that changed in early 1900s. Here is a essay written by Benjamin Franklin in 1751 which quotes, Why should the Palestine Moors be suffered to swarm into our settlements? They will never adopt the white man's customs any more than they can obtain the white man's complexion. All of Africa, Asia and America are, swarthy, black. Russia, Italy, Spain, France, Swedes and the Germans are black. The principal whites are made up of the Saxos of English. The Scots, Welsh and Irish are not Saxon or English. When Benjamin Franklin writes this essay in 1751 the black German king, George II is sitting on the throne of England. Benjamin Franklin further went on to say that in the year of 1664, there were 7,000 Dutchmen besides the real Dutch. Prussians, Bohemians, French, Swedes, Norwegians, Danes and 5,000 English, including the Scots, Welsh and Irish who were black and Benjamin Franklin's essay proves this. If you would like to know more about what Benjamin Franklin was quoting in his writings please check out the book, Observations Concerning the Increase of Mankind, 1751. So who were the Jacobites? Why were they called the Jacobites? We are getting there. Here is a picture of King James VI and I, who is credited with translation in the Holy Bible. Here you can see a picture of King James with Latin writing that says Rex Jacobus VIDG Magni Britanni, Frank, E. T. Hibernae. This simply translates to King Jacob VI of Great Britain, France, and Ireland. King James I and VI was also ruler of the three kingdoms, Ireland, Scotland and Britannia. King James bared the seal of Jacobus and was a Jacobite king. This picture gives you an idea of the true people of the Jacobite kingdom. The black people who inhabited either of these three kingdoms, Ireland, Scotland and Britannia, were known as the Jacobite people, where in these lands all these people were of black skin and still have black skin. Charles Philip author George Stuart also called Charles I, second son of King James and son of Anne of Denmark who was ruler of England, Scotland and Ireland from 1660 to 1665. Preceded by his father King James, Charles first only ruled England for five years after some of his subjects conspired against him with some other foreigners, known as the White English or Hanoverians. Charles I was executed by Oliver Cromwell who was the English general and later commander-in-chief. This picture shows Charles I. King of Scotland being executed by Oliver Cromwell the English, white man. The image here is believed to be an actual eyewitness account of the black King Charles I, King of Scotland's beheading done by the English, white men. This image can be found in the book Leviathan by author Thomas Hobbes 1651. After, King Charles I had the unlucky distinction of having his head cut off by the English, white men, in his realm. King Charles I was not the only person to suffer indignation. When the English overran the country they hung and decapitated men, raped women, burned the citizens at the stakes and dashed the children against stones. This is a bit of history that is not taught nor repeated in the classrooms or in the annals of world history. These pictures following are said to be the actual eyewitness accounts of what took place, as you can see the brutality inflicted on the black people of the British Isles. This is a black man being hanged by the English, white men, with no one around him. There have been intentions and attempts to wipe out his skin color and make him appear as a white man but the black features still remain if you look close enough. This picture shows a black Irish man being strangled with a rope by the English soldier, white men. The white Englishmen answered to a black king in Rome, they were originally known as castrados which is young white males castrated to retain in soprano or alto voice for their own choir, but this was later given positions in various areas such as the army. In this picture is a black child being impained by the English, take note of the Irish black people as they are wearing turbans. Thousands of black Irish Scots and Brits were killed and the rest taken to work in the commons of the Americas. This list here shows where the black inhabitants of Europe was forcefully taken to. In page 5 of this book that we are looking at states, 
one thing the historian understands is that the victor goes to the land and the identity. When the Scottish blacks were driven out of Scotland, the English, white men, moved into the empty land and confiscated the black people's property and took their identity. This concept is not as ridiculous as you might think. The land and all their valuables and names were taken by the new white inhabitants. Which captives that were sent where, is not definite as the peoples from the three kingdoms were the same as people used to say, if you've seen a Irish man, then you have seen a Scots and the Brits. After King Charles I was executed, the Jacobites tried to restore the House of Stuart back to its original place on the throne but was defeated during the rebellion by Cromwell and his army and was sent to Jamaica, Guinea, Barbados and parts of America. In this book, titled A West Indian Study, Whence the Black Irish of Jamaica by Joseph J. Williams, S. J. from Ireland through Barbados to Jamaica, gives more information about the black people who were the original inhabitants of Europe and then taken to many parts of the Americas. The picture on this book shows a black Irish man in Jamaica which made me think, all the people who migrated to England from the West Indies in 1948 and 1917 one Windrush was actually going back home because they were originally from the British Isles. These are the contents of the book called Whence the Black Irish of Jamaica. 1. From Ireland. 2, through Barbados and 3, to Jamaica. In 1, from Ireland. Mary Gaunt, writing about Jamaica in 1922 states to this boiling pot, Cromwell sent a thousand Irish men and a thousand Irish women, she could find nothing but the bare notification that they arrived, and it hardly seemed to her that those two thousand Irish have helped masters much, whether they were poor convicts or political prisoners. In 1756 Dr. Brown was most emphatic in his statement which quotes Cromwell having had early intelligence of this conquest, Jamaica, resolved to miss no opportunity of supporting this new acquisition, which now indeed served him as another Siberia. So Mary Gaunt, writes in 1922, that there is evidence of thousands of Irish women and men sent to Jamaica by Cromwell and that they were poor convicts and prisoners, not slaves. Edward Long the historian who was Speaker of the Jamaica House of 1768, when writing a few years later, only expressed the commonly accepted opinion in the island when he recorded that the Council State of England voted that 1,000 girls and as many young men should be lifted in Ireland and sent over to assist in peopling the colony. On May 11, 1655, Jamaica formally capitulated to the representatives of Cromwell, the Lord Protector of England and as early as the following July 18, we find a document signed by the field officers of the army in Jamaica concerning an army in America seeking necessary equipment and supplies, the request is made that servants from Scotland or elsewhere may be sent to assist in planting and other things, for which the officers out of their pay will make such allowance as His Highness shall think fit and assign them such proportions of land as His Highness shall direct at the expiration of their respective terms. The Council of State of England voted that 1,000 black Irish girls and black Irish boys and as much should be sent to Jamaica. However, it was way more than 1,000 Irish girls and boys were taken to Jamaica. The English historians repeatedly mentioned that the black Irish people who were sent to assist with the people in the colony abroad, and that the request was made by servants from Scotland and elsewhere to assist in planting and so forth and that the blacks' captives taken abroad were given paid work and land to pursue this work. They were also house servants and not slaves they say. Here shows a library in Boston College, Massachusetts, America. The library here has an undated manuscript with Oliver Cromwell's words, entitled Certain Queries Concerning His Highness' Interest in the West Indies. In this book entitled Certain Queries Concerning His Highness' Interest in the West Indies, Using Oliver Cromwell's words, the last two paragraphs state and quote whether His Highness' interest in the West Indies can be carried on without the settling of some course for the constant supplying them with people. Whether the weeding the commonwealth of vagabonds, condemned persons and such as are useless and hurtful and war and peace, and a settled course taken for the transporting them to the Indies and thereby principally supplying Jamaica is not necessary to be consulted. Take note of the literal changes from how the language and words used often changed from convicts to political prisoners, to vagabonds, condemned person, 
useless and hurtfully in war and peace, but we know why they were really taken to the West Indies. The blacks were trying to restore their king, the House of Stuarts back to the throne of the Three Kingdoms. Now the answer to Secretary Thurlow which is dated September the 11th, 1655 quotes Sir, I received yours of the fourth instant, and give you many thanks for your relation of Jamaica and though ye have met with some more than ordinary cross-providence in this undertaking, yet I doubt not but the Lord will smile upon it in the issues. I have endeavored to make what improvement I could in the short time allotted me touching the furnishings you with a recruit of men and a supply of young Irish girls. In order to it, I have advised with the chief officers near me. Thurlow states in his letter that the Lord will smile upon his endeavor of sending the Irish girls to Jamaica. So this shows that they, the English, white men, were aware of their wrongdoings as Christians of the Christian faith. Looking at the Black Irish of Jamaica book, it quotes by the Englishmen, white men, that, not having the opportunity to make it more public, neither though I think it convenient until I know your resolutions more particularly, concerning the young women, although we must use force in taking them up, yet it being so much for their own good and likely to be of great advantage to the public. It is not in doubt that you may have such number of them as Toy shall think fit to make use upon this account. Perfectly explained. We know that the black people who inhabited Europe were forcibly taken to the West Indies and abroad to other lands not by their doing or choice but by force. In Cromwell's undertaking of the black people from the British Isles, Thurlow assured Cromwell that he will furnish him with a steady recruit of many men and supply of young women. It was not as Mary Gaunt stated, just 1,000 girls and 1,000 boys who said she could find nothing but the bare notification showing that they arrived suggesting that it was only 2,000 black people of the British Isles captured and that they would not be of much help to make use on this account. Continuing their writings, the book further quotes a week later we have the following from the same source, I have little to add to what I write in my last, I shall not need to repeat anything about the girls, not doubting but to answer your expectations to the full and that, and I think it might be of like advantage to your affairs there, and ours here if you should think fit to send 1,500 or 2,000 young boys of 12 or 14 years of age to the place aforementioned. We could well spare them and they would be of use to you and who knows, but that it may be a means to make them Englishmen, I mean rather, Christians. This story so far shows us that it was not just black women and men taken from their British Isles but young black boys and girls were taken too from young ages and some children were orphans and some had parents where their fathers were taken to be workers in other English, white men, colonies and some women or wives were taken to other colonies such as the West Indies. In this book on page 10 of this book states that Mr. Prendergast's work The Cromwell Settlement in Ireland appeared in London in 1865 and in Appendix 11 which is entitled Two of the Seizing of Widows and Orphans, and the Destitute and Transporting Them to Barbados and the English Plantations. We read here, while the government were employed in clearing the ground for the adventurers and soldiers, the English capitalists of that day by making the nobility and gentry yield up their ancient inheritances and withdraw to Connaught, where they could wish the whole nation, they had agents actively employed through Ireland, seizing women, orphans and the destitute to be transported to Barbados and the English plantations in America. It was a measure beneficial to Ireland, which was relieved of a population that might trouble the planters. It was benefit to the people removed who might then be made English and Christians and a great benefit to the West Indian sugar planters who desired the men and boys for their bondmen, and the women and Irish girls in a country where they had only maroon women and negresses to solace them. The maroon women and negresses that are mentioned were indigenous American so-called Indians a couple Spaniard women who fled to the mountains when the English, white men, invaded the islands. So far we know of so-called Indiana being enslaved and now we have learnt about the black Irish, black Scots and black Brits that were taken to the West Indies by the thousands. So where are the African slaves that were taken directly from Africa to Jamaica and other countries by the western ships as we were once told? The Thirteen Years' War from 1641 to 1654 followed by the departure of 40,000 Irish soldiers with the chief nobility and gentry to Spain had left behind a vast mass of widows and deserted wives with destitute families. 
There were plenty of other persons too, who as their ancient properties had been confiscated, had no visible means of livelihood. Just as the King of Spain sent over his agents to treat with the government for the Irish swordsmen, the merchants of Bristol had agents treating with for men, women and girls to be sent to the sugar plantations in the West Indies. The commissioners for Ireland gave them orders upon the governors of garrisons to deliver to them prisoners of war upon the keepers of jails for offenders in custody, upon matters of workhouses, for the destitute in their care who were of an age to labor or if women were marriageable and not past breeding and gave directions to all in authority to seize those who had no visible means of livelihood and deliver them to these agents of the Bristol sugar merchants in execution. So now you see, with the departure of 40,000 black Irish soldiers who had left behind their families and who were destitute and plenty of other black Irishes who were healthy and capable to work were sent to the colonies. Take note again f how their properties were confiscated and how they were delivered to the colonies as prisoners of war and the commissioner of Ireland gave them orders upon the governance of garrisons. Now. This information might not be readily accepted to some people but we're trying our best to break it down to you. Moving on, anyone that was for the House of Stuart, was basically against Oliver Cromwell. The Lord Protector of England. Subjects of the House of Stuart, who were the Jacobites were sent to the English colonies abroad. There were priests and pastors that disagreed with Cromwell's new endeavors and those people were also sent to the English colonies in the West Indies. There was also black and white officials working for Cromwell who were given pay and land and assisting with the black people in the English colonies. The Jacobites were sent to the plantations, the women and servants and the young boys and bondsmen which is not what we know as slavery today. However, the conditions and treatments and some plantations were next to slavery. Most West Indians believe that they got their name today from white slave masters and don't know that they in fact arrived in the West Indies with their names. In fact, the black Irish names were taken by the English and their associates. Names such as Andrews, Gilbert, Collins, Walsh, Sterling, McCain, M. C. Dermond, Blake, Mackey and many more. The name Blake is from one of the 14 tribes of Galway in Ireland and the name means black. In this picture, is a black person who is Scottish coats of arms from the House of Andrews. This black Scottish coats of arms was found in Scotland, Europe. It has been written that Andrew the chief of the clan, rendered homage to King Edward I of England in 1296. The purpose of this image is to reinforce the writings of the historians mentioned at the beginning of our video that the original people of Europe were and are black. In this next picture, you can see in black. Irish coats of arms from the family of Gilbert or House of Gilbert. Three of these Gilberts related to the coats of arms have been traced to Barbados. The three Gilberts were Thomas Gilbert to Barbados in 1635, Francis Gilbert to Virginia in 1736 and Robert Gilbert to Barbados in 1678. This book we have been examining the Negro Question Part 4. The missing link by Lee Cummings states Irish and Scots are the same people and the Scots are a tribe from Northeast Ireland. This book was written by a destitute priest John J. Williams and was published in 1932 by New York Press. In this book, a West Indian study, whence the Black Irish of Jamaica by Joseph J. Williams, S. J. from Ireland through Barbados to Jamaica describes the black Irish that were deported to Jamaica as black people and in the picture you can see on this page or showing us some of the black children taken from Ireland. This may all be a lot to take in but we thank you for watching and sticking to the end of our video, we hope you have learned something informative and historic. Please click the notification bell so that you can be updated with our videos regularly. Thank you and bye. Until next time.